When you think of deep space, what images come to mind? Maybe nebula, galaxies, or distant star fields? Whatever you imagined, chances are that the Hubble Space Telescope has taken a picture of it in its 31-year lifespan. Hubble has given us over a million spectacular images since its launch, and its laundry list of research includes studying exoplanets, black holes, galaxies, and the expansion of the universe. Unfortunately, the telescope is starting to show signs of age. Just this last October, Hubble unexpectedly went into safe mode, temporarily disabling all five of its major scientific instruments. Operations returned to normal on December 7th, but these catastrophic events may become more and more likely as the telescope continues to age. Luckily, NASA's newest flagship observatory is set to launch in just a couple of weeks on December 24th, 2021. The James Webb Space Telescope will revolutionize observational astronomy. Its mirror is almost three times the diameter of Hubble's, allowing it to collect more light at a greater resolution. One of the things that I'm very excited about, of course, is the prospect of discovering the first galaxies to form after the Big Bang. The most distant one seen by Hubble is maybe we're seeing it as it was about 400 million years after the Big Bang. We ought to be able to detect many more at that same epoch and hopefully get even closer to the beginning, maybe even only 100 or 200 million years after the Big Bang. So that's one really big thing I'd like to do. On top of this, JWST's instruments are tuned to collect infrared light, which will allow astronomers to probe deep space and peer through dust clouds. Things that move away from us have their light shifted to the red by the Doppler shift. And if we want to study the very first galaxies in the universe, we have to be prepared to observe at wavelengths much longer than visible light because the hydrogen left over in the universe absorbs shorter wavelengths and we simply won't see anything. If we want to study the planets around other stars, exoplanets, their output peaks in the infrared just like the output of the planets in the solar system. Most of the energy radiated by the Earth, Mars, Jupiter, anything in the solar system comes out at infrared wavelengths, so it makes sense to have an infrared telescope. One of the things that makes the JWST special is its location. It's set to orbit around the second Lagrange point, well beyond the Moon's orbit around the Earth. This spot is a stable location where the telescope's sun shield can simultaneously block light from both the Earth and the Sun. This control will allow the telescope's instruments to maintain a constant temperature and gather light without interference. Hubble was serviceable so that people could take more chances and Webb is not serviceable because it's at the second Lagrange point so it's a million miles away from Earth and we don't have a way to send anybody there. And that's prompted a much more thorough testing program than Hubble. The telescope can also observe cooler sources which primarily emit in the infrared band instead of in the visible range, allowing us to observe many overlooked objects. There are four instruments. NearCam is a camera with 40 megapixels that operates from very red light that your eye could barely detect out to a wavelength about 10 times that of visible light. There is a longer wavelength camera called MIRI, which stands for Mid-Infrared Instrument. We weren't real clever with the names. And it is also a spectrometer, and it works from you know, this kind of 10 times visible light to 60 times the wavelength of visible light, so it's quite far into the infrared. Then there's a Canadian instrument called NIRIS, Near Infrared Slitless Spectrometer, that will be used mainly for exoplanet transits. And then a very complicated instrument called NIRSPEC, which, as you might guess from the name, is a near infrared spectrometer. You can match opening up some of its inputs to objects on the sky, so you could take spectra of maybe 200 things at once. With all this on the line, countless people have dedicated years to ensure that JWST makes it safely to its orbit around the Lagrange point. One of the most common questions asked of the people working on JWST is, what if everything goes wrong? Rocket launches are always a little bit scary because the rocket is basically a controlled explosion. On the other hand, the rocket we're launching on is the most reliable that's available right now. So that gives one some comfort. Most of its critical actions or critical subsystems, so to speak, are redundant. All the electrical circuits in NearCam, for example, are doubled. So if one set fails, we can switch to another. 
the telescope really can't end up with a problem like Hubble's because we can adjust all the 18 mirror segments and make certain that it makes a nice image. The one place where there could be problems lie with the sun shield where the deployments rely on pulleys and cables and they can't be doubled, but the deployments can be tried several times. You can back up and start over again and try again. And of course, the very last test of all of that worked perfectly, so that's the key the key um, thing to hang your hat on. After decades of planning and construction, the James Webb Space Telescope has enormous expectations. It's a continuation of the legacy of Hubble and many other great observatories that have pushed the boundaries of our knowledge of the universe and unlocked entirely new frontiers for us. As we wait with crossed fingers and bated breath, many people have already begun to wonder about what the next flagship space telescope might look like. How will engineers and scientists build on the current and future legacies of the Hubble and James Webb Space Telescopes? If you look at the recent ESTRO 2020 Decadal Survey Report, there were people that proposed kind of versions of Webb on steroids that had many more segments where one of the options was instead of six and a half meters diameter it was 15 meters diameter with an enormous sunshade. I have no idea how you would try the deployment of that on in a, in a gravitational field. Maybe someday we will have space station scale telescopes that have only ever been dreamed of in science fiction. Until that day, we have the historic groundbreaking legacy of Hubble, the excitement and promise of the JWST, and the countless spectacular images they beam down to us on Earth. Whenever you open up a new wavelength regime with such a jump in sensitivity as we're doing here, there's always the hope that you'll discover something that you never thought of. That'd be the most fun of all.